Yo, 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 you tuning in to the Notion Podcast. I'm your host, Dizzy D. Spill, with my co host in the building. Still currently Farmer Poe until further notice. Man, we just, just, we just gonna keep it as Farmer Poe. Or, or you, you know how, you know how people shorten their nicknames and their stage names, right? So you could just say further notice. Further notice? Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. further notice until, yeah. Nah, you ain't even got to say that. Just yeah. be like, yeah, further it's your boy, notice. further note. That's kind of yeah, a hard yeah, name. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and coin notice. that. Further notice. Because further notice, man, means unpredictable. You don't know when or where it's going to happen, man. I, I'm going to take that back. And I'm going gonna gonna, to give you a different name, man. We're going to flip that, too. We got other <laughs> fur, fur note. Yup. You know, I mean, we can do yeah different things to that. That sound like expensive garments, but all right. <laughs> all right. How you been living, brother? How you doing, man? Uh, I'm in, I'm been honestly the last two months. Financially, I've been good. Well, that's great because I've been needing some bread. <sighs> you got to You've been baking. That's crazy. You was baking. That's crazy how baking? he was like. I don't think I got that much. <laughs> That was the energy that came out. I don't think I got that much, but you know, I, I, we straight financially. We, been, we straight. I've been good because I, I, I actually like um, been managing, managing your your expi- expenditures a little bit better, huh? Budgeted, keeping to it, and then also um, some for my job. We have steps. So, we mean with steps. steps with our with my job with certain types of employments. Your job. Oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. So you move up you and, get you get, Basically, and you get like a, a certain percentage every every time you move up and stuff like yeah, that. I right? get a, like every what's this July? Every July I get every June I get a raise. So the okay. month of July I get my pay raise every every year. Every subscriber I'll get a raise. So y'all got to y'all got to do y'all yeah. part. You know what I'm saying? I even took the glasses off so y'all can see how serious I am. Yeah, today he's not playing with yeah, y'all. I ain't playing with y'all today, yeah. man. Look me in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I, that that happened. So I've been, uh, I've been, I've been cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's good, man. No, that's, that's always good, man. No, it's always good. Stress, really. That you know, I think that's like, I think those are the um, the small wins. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get through the day stress free when it seems like it's designed. For you to go through stress, it just seems like you got you, you spend the whole day throughout the week dodging, yeah, dodging stress, yeah, or or learning how to cope with it. So yeah, and I've been working on my procrastination. Okay, um, and then also um, <clears throat> my son had his first um, uh, therapy session. Session. Really? Yeah, signed him up for. Um, uh, with a therapist for bro I gotta commend you on that and I'm gonna tell you why because yeah. we always hear stories uh, like in a past tense mm-hmm. concept like yeah we did this we tried that everything is better so to speak but you know doing that you know cause I, I believe that we all need it to a certain degree oh yeah you for know sure. what I'm saying for sure it's not a guarantee that it's gonna work for everybody mm-hmm. but or the certain uh, traditional way, mm-hmm. because a lot of times we see it all the time on social media, right? Somebody will be like, "Ah, oh, man, you need therapy," or something like such and such need therapy. Well, therapy doesn't mean always sitting in front of somebody and telling them something. It can mean swimming, it can mean hiking, it can mean jogging, it can mean doing something that completely has your focus that you're interested in to kind of decompress your mind. So, um, for sure. So I applaud it. However. You guys are doing that for him. I applaud that, man. Yeah, Respect yeah. for got, real. Got that. Um, we had an initial meeting um, last week, mm-hmm. and then this week he he and I both met the um, the therapist. Okay. Uh, through my insurance, through Kaiser, obviously. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it was cool. It was just a re- regular, regular one. They the first one was kind of like a get information about. Um, he met with them this this session. He met with the the therapist for like a quick 10, 15 minutes before I spoke to them, and then he had like more of a in depth one on one with them. Okay, so, you know, I I always I had already talked to him about. Um, I had already been considering it, so mm-hmm. uh, my daughter's mom had already con- she was doing it for both of her children, and okay. she had already kind of told me that you know maybe I should consider it spoke spoke to some good friends of mine like at work uh-huh. that I kind of trust and we confide in and stuff so they you know thought said maybe you might want to think about it 
And then he had a um, doctor's appointment. And from that doctor's appointment, they hit me up and said, you know, they had asked him some intake questions. And they thought about um, considering therapy. So I, I, I was like, oh, yeah, this is the time. So I signed him up. Um, and yeah, it won't. It won't That's it big, wasn't, man. It wasn't, wasn't too bad. I'd already talked to him about um, what it was. This is like a per don't feel like there's something necessarily wrong with you. This is a person that is. No, this to keep you, you on to, track. It's to keep you, you know what I'm and saying? Help right. Guide you. This is like a guide. Like if you're going through the forest and somebody who's been through the forest before or knows this landscape is kind of helping you to guide you and yeah. help you understand yourself and maybe, you know, help you figure out things that you may be feeling that you're not aware of or right. are aware of um so and this is you know all for the better so i, I love it because and confidentiality i told him like yeah i'm not about to be every time i ask you how did it go that don't mean you got to tell me what you, what, what was saying was talking about right i'm gonna respect that i would like for you yeah i would like to know but yeah you got you got to let me know at yeah. your own discretion exactly right right I, and i and i applaud that too because it took a it took us as a culture a long time to get to this point if you think about it yeah. and it's like we we often see content creators and we often see our peers and people that um b1s pro black however you want to call it they talk about the trauma they talk about the past and they talk about our strength mm -hmm. but mental health has been a highlight conversation it, from from my perspective it seemed like it's been a highlight conversation for the past decade where it's like Nah, we got to talk about this because when we were coming up, that was frowned upon. Mm -hmm. When we were coming up, it was like, oh man, they go to, and we don't even understand that therapy is no different than eating your vegetables, right? Eat, eat, when you eat your vegetables, when you eat healthy fruits, when you eat healthy food, it does something to your body and it actually does something to your mental. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of like when people say uh, reading is fundamental and then Eddie, Eddie Griffin broke it down and said, reading is fun to mental. Your, mm -hmm. your, your mind needs a different type of food yeah you know what i mean so i i mm -hmm. applaud that because like i said in our culture we've as a culture we've uh tried our best to go left go the other direction because we don't we never took the time to understand the concept why it's important and how much we can grow and benefit off of it in the future and me myself you know knowing you know me for umpteen years mm -hmm. i feel like i could get through things myself and that could be a hindrance to my ability to kind of overcome, advance, or understand things that I might be experiencing or uh, subconscious or consciously. And then being my dad was a fucking therapist. like, mm -hmm. And I kind of rejected that type of... Um, when you know the game a little bit, you feel like antics are being you. Like, I remember yeah, 2 like, Chains. I don't need that shit. I can get through it myself. 2 Chains did a Breakfast Club interview years ago. And because he, I believe he has his degree in psychology. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so he said it was a challenge for him uh, to consider therapy because he knows the different, um, the different steps, uh -huh. different angles to get you to talk. And, you know, they know what they're supposed to say, what they're not supposed to say, how to, how to pull information out of you. Uh -huh. And so he, it, it, it kind of like um, jaded his concept on it. Right. Uh -huh. But, I took that and I applied what he said in the, in the opposite direction. For example, throughout my professional background, I've had a lot of safety culture training and all of this stuff, right? Right. But I realized that the training that I that I got about safety culture in a work environment, I'm like, man, I can apply these same strategies and steps to problem solving. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it, it really is perception. And perspective that will have that can have a negative impact or a positive impact, but I think most importantly for us as a culture is definitely needed because it will it, it will help us understand a lot. And believe it or not, I don't know if you knew this before me and the wife got married, we did uh, marriage counseling, premarital pre counseling, not just through the church. Yeah, no, not just through the church. Mm -hmm. Um, it was on a spiritual level where we had to pay, but it was not like, oh, we're going to go to this church where the pastor knows me. And no, it right. was it was an unbiased, unbiased, you know, and I'm glad we did that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think it's necessary to continue doing that, even if it's like once a month or, you know, just having that reset, mm -hmm. because 
we get so wrapped up in the day to day responsibilities and tasks that sometimes we think about ourselves last. Yeah, for you sure. See what I'm saying? And um, and 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 I think that the more we do that as a people, the better off we'll be. The better way we'll problem solve. Mm-hmm. The better way we'll feel comfortable about who we are. Mm-hmm. And, and regardless of what people may think of us, so. And you know me, you've known me kind of like in different parts of my life where mm-hmm. I was not as forthcoming with just opening up to people. Oh yeah, you you were safe. So for sure, for sure definitely, <laughs> it's locked and key with me. Yeah. It's it's locked away. But I think just dealing with um, coming out of my relationship with my son's mom, I. I kind of became more open with like just expressing and talking to people and, and like so much so that sometimes I tell people more than that, like talk more mm-hmm. and sometimes I over talk now to where I'm like so much more comfortable with just talking and expressing the things that I go through that is like I like it well well you know what it is that you probably started to understand it ain't just you for sure you know what I'm saying and that's how I pick what I want to talk about with who I want to talk about or what or what I want to talk about and with whom I want to do that with because um, when you have close, if you're lucky enough and privileged enough to have people that you can trust and confide into, you will start to understand the more you express what you've dealt with or what you're dealing with and then they have a, a response of I understand because I you know like damn okay I'm not alone I'm not by myself you and, know what I'm saying and it comes with some confidence too, yeah like and different perspective of like you know what I never thought about looking at the situation like this because mm-hmm. I find myself doing that when I'm talking to people and they tell me about a situation or a scenario because I like to talk and I like to talk to different people in my life I can I can say I think I, I do believe I'm good at facilitating certain individuals around each other based off what I know about the two sides. Right. I could be like, y'all two would mesh well because of A, B, C, D, whether that's y'all have experienced the same thing and have the same interests because of communicating and talking and confining into each other. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah I, I, I definitely encourage that because, you know, we live in a time where ghosting is popular and competition is popular and I don't trust no like if I if I made a post right now about yeah I don't trust nobody I just do it myself I know it's gonna get yeah, likes and attention I feel the same way yeah. bro I don't be trusting bro you my spitting head. right now yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. but really what it is is I'm not speaking to you with wisdom I'm just speaking to you through trauma and mm-hmm. that woke up the trauma that you probably wasn't even thinking about prior to me saying it you see sure. what I'm saying so sure. Having a healthy relationship with somebody and then sharing experiences that are similar, that's that could be therapy within itself. Yeah, because every rapper, we I mean, not every rapper, but we see a lot of rappers, they say, man, they be in a video and it'd be like 15, 20 niggas. Yeah. They say, man, I don't trust nobody. Like, <laughs> and I'd be in the video. One of your partners is holding your money. Yeah, I don't trust, I don't trust no nigga. And you'd be like, what? The oh. next line be, I call my boy Wooty Whoop to handle that. <laughs> yeah. You trust them to handle Hold that, on, but you what, don't trust nigga? him at all. Yeah, shit, shit is rap contradictory. Is conf- rapping is, rap is confusing it's if confusing. you're trying to find a straight path on what to do I'm gonna tell you that right now look at it as entertainment straight up I seen Lil Durk said he don't let people come to his house yeah Vince Staples said the same thing I don't want nobody coming to my house and I was like why you get that big ass house so you don't like (laughs) so you got friends but you don't trust them enough to come to your house no he was Durk was saying it more of he don't trust he don't let people come around his family his wife and his girl I'm like damn so birthday like, parties be naked so but yeah it's a, it's a lot of it's a lot of trauma they dealing with because it's like so you kick it with them to do other shit but you don't trust them enough to be around your family like mm-hmm. I just if I don't trust you in one a- aspect of life I don't fuck with you yeah Straight up. There's no way that I'm like not trusting you around my family, girl, um, in my house, whatever. If I don't trust you in one aspect of life, I don't fuck. I'm gonna keep it real. I, I, I definitely understand boundaries, y'all. Yeah. But to flat out not trust people 
and celebrate it, I'm just letting you know it's depressing and it's not cool. Yeah, I, I'm not because sure. but the but the other thing too is the controversy, contradiction, and and hypocrisy behind it. Yeah, because we'll say I don't trust nobody around my family and then go order some food. Yeah, and I don't. You trust I, the hands <laughs> that prepare some food that you are about to put in your body, but you don't trust somebody that you've know. Like we got to get our priorities straight. That's all I'm saying. And that's I all I'm even, saying. I don't even know of anybody that I don't trust. So that's a crazy concept for me to even think about. But I don't not trust people that I have associations with. Like I said, I got boundaries. Like I yeah, trust boundaries. my people, but there's certain things I don't trust certain people with. Not because we we use that word trust as in you're gonna you know you're gonna you're gonna do treason. Yeah. You're gonna stab me in my back. Yeah. Nah, trust can have levels to it. Right So for example If I know you like Watermelon and strawberries And grapes and stuff like that I'm not gonna trust you To make the fruit salad During nigga, the cookout Cause nigga you finna be Picking out You gonna be picking shit. out yeah, the food yeah, yeah, man yeah, 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 If you don't wash your yeah, hands yeah, 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 yeah. I don't trust that you took me In consideration yeah. Before yeah. Before you yeah. made a loaf of bread <laughs> You understand what I, But that don't mean I don't trust you As a human being exactly. Where if exactly. I tell you To keep a secret You won't And that's a lot of people difference. They use that word As a broad statement that's For exactly. everything For sure You know what I mean Because sure. there there are Boundaries to trust I'm not going to trust The plumber to fix My electricity in my house For sure I don't give a damn You know for what I'm sure. saying So it, it's le- it's levels to it And for it's sure. kind of It's kind of interesting That we're on that uh, We're on that frequency Because you know One of the topics was it, it, it's something that I, I feel like should have been addressed a long time ago, kind of like how we used to do our format, but black men's self-worth. And yeah. I think I think there's some blurred lines with um, more black men understanding their value to society and to their culture that's getting mixed in with being sassy or feminine or not tolerating things and um, mm. and I wanted to I wanted to talk about that and I already okay. know okay. you know me and you we really really be into the culture conversations so mm-hmm. you know starting out with like for example what we're doing right now we podcast right and now that a lot of us men and I'm not saying every podcast is healthy or right mm-hmm. but the point that I'm making is now there is a space for men you used to just be confined to the barbershop Mm-hmm. And that could be a short trip or a long trip. And the barbershop conversations was only uh, to a certain extent. Surface level. Sports, Surface, yeah. women, you're back in reve- the day. You're not revealing your deepest, yeah. darkest thoughts or your, or your you're you're real opinion being, on certain and things. And you're not being vulnerable. Right. Absolutely. For sure. So, you know, with us having these spaces now, I'm starting to see, I don't want to say the, the shift, but more of the goalposts being moved on. Um what's defining us and, and, and things of that nature. For example, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you've seen the crazy memes where it's like, I want day guys that have the following, a podcast, a rap career, uh, blah, 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 blah. And, and and I think that, you know, we're just in a position where we could finally speak up because you got to think from young adolescent ages to where we are now, we've seen daytime TV, we've seen soap operas where nine times out of 10, the man or men were the antagonists, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've seen plenty of things on TV where it was like all men are dogs. Yeah. Right? Yeah, as a kid. That, You're seeing this as like a kid. A, that was a general consensus. This was a general that, consensus. That men and women both agreed upon. So I've always looked at it like this. When I would see that on TV, all men are dogs, right? And then being around your uncles, your older brother or your daddy telling you you're a man, mm-hmm. when you combine the two, it's like, so I'm a dog? Because... No, they they raising me and telling me I'm a man. Be a man about it when you scrape your knee. But then I'm a dog. You know what I mean? So now that we have these spaces where men can speak up, I was I was gonna actually ask you as we get into this conversation, why do you think or why do you believe you see so many women calling men that are being more vulnerable or speaking up more um sassy or soft or feminine i mean you even have men saying like oh man the men are more feminine now and i and i determine a man being feminine off of a a, off of a different grading scale than what i see everybody else defining as feminine it's a weird time that we're in and it's kind of interesting because 
obviously I'm not tapped into like the white algorithm. So I don't know the conversations that they're having between their counterparts, but it is kind of odd that, you know, we are dealing, we're in a time where women and it's, 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 it's different. So, you know, you'll have someone who has an opinion about, um, gender about men and women uh relationships right and then we'll kind of say well y'all based on this person's opinion right we'll say y'all and that might not have been that person's um how do i say it like say this person is saying that a vulnerable man is soft or whatever and then yeah. they'll say well y'all black women wanted this and this and that and yeah it's like Generalizing. We're, we're in a time where we're generalizing one person's opinion and attaching it to the, the group. The group. Yeah. And then we're in a time where it's even it's been more opinions about uh, the vulnerability of black men, and it, it seems like neither's. I won't say neither side, but I don't know if they know what they want. I'm not sure that they want know what they want because I dealt with that for sure, where I was told that I wasn't vulnerable, and I. And I, I felt that way. Uh, it was a new relationship, and I was attempting to be more expressive. I had been, I was super comfortable just talking. Yeah. I mean, I was told that I wasn't being vulnerable, and it took. They basically said, "You won't tell me your password." I, <laughs> I started to believe it. Yeah. Because I knew who I was before, right. so I knew I was still trying to like learn to navigate and become a, um, advance and become more mm -hmm. vulnerable, not for whomever I was with, but for myself. Right. And then one day the light bulb went off, and I was like, "I think I am vulnerable." I laugh, I cry, I get mad, I'm sad. You'll you, also but you'll you also put not. yourself you'll also put yourself in a position, right? Where, because I think this takes somebody that has to. I think in order to be vulnerable, you have to have humility. Yeah. And I've on a on numbers of occasions watched you allow truth that could be comedy at the expense of your of your experience. Uh -huh. Right. So like, if we crack it on you or we make a joke, whatever, you like, man, whatever. That shit was funny. There has to be some vulnerability there. To not be defensive about it, yeah, or you might you tell know a story. I'm a person. Yeah, yeah, but you might make a con or you might tell a story where something embarrassing happened to you. Right, that's vulnerable For because sure. some people don't want anybody or the world to know that they have a soft uh, um, texture behind this hard tough exterior that they present to people and that comes with my confidence because i'm so confident in who i am and myself exactly. and i love myself so much that i can be vulnerable or express this or reveal this part or the story of mine and still be okay with who i am i think it be i think a lot of maybe what these women who may have these opinions or contrasting opinions i would like to know had they grown up in a household with a mom and a dad I don't I don't believe I'm trying to use that word better um, I don't believe that a lot of them have Because you would see Because the idea Of who a man is Or who they've created as a man In their minds Or what a man should be Or who, who they should be Everyone's damn near raised with their mom So mm -hmm. you understand men Even with that in the house You up under your mom a lot Yeah yeah, but, but men, most boys and young black, young black boys and black girls who grow up in households are single parents. You're mostly gonna be with the mom, uh -huh. so you kind of understand the different dynamics of of how women express themselves, uh -huh. the strengths, uh -huh. maybe the so called weaknesses, the vulnerability, and the things that they deal with. Right. Right. So a lot of women and young men uh -huh. don't grow up in households with men in the household consistently like living in that house whether it's learning from them whether it's a uh, mm -hmm. half time with dad half time with mom being on the being the weekends you don't get enough you know two days or three days because before it's before you enough. know it but by the time you get into the rhythm it shifts yeah. back into the way it's normally it normally is for your life and that man isn't going to be as he's, he's he might let things go that he might not ne let normally go 
if, if he had to deal with it full time. If he had to deal with it full time, it's gonna yeah. be like, oh, 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 that's just, you know, you can kind of let shit slide. So I think a lot of women who have these opinions perhaps have never really lived with a man growing up as a, as a child to mm-hmm. understand the different dynamics of how men express themselves because you can't hide from who you are when you're in the house. Real talk. You, you, you can't hide from you can't yourself hide. no matter where you're at you because your, your mind is going to replay those experiences and those thoughts and those feelings all the time. Yeah. And I agree with that because, for example, I'll give you an example kind of like to um, compliment what you just said about being around a man often or enough, right? Mm-hmm. When you hear so many men on the internet, right, say that at the end of the day, that's cool if you have a career, that's cool if you have a degree, but we don't care about your money, keyword your, um, a lot of women would push back and be like, yeah, you do, and this, that, and the other, but I think the reason why they don't understand that is because if they were around men who may have had or have a successful woman in their life, you would be able to see what that man values from that woman. And a lot of times it has, now don't get me wrong, I know it's leeches out there. There's male leeches and there's female leeches, okay? We we understand this. We're not saying that that doesn't exist. But I'm talking about the men that are secure in who they are and very, very clear and um, very clear and very intentional about what they want. A lot of times, most of us, we're really simple. And sometimes that even pisses, we don't that even much. pisses our counterparts off too. For sure. Because we're so simple do you want to do this i'm not tripping is it a yes or no that could turn into an argument because you said no that just means you're not leading yeah you know what i'm saying and and even that statement right there if you don't lead or if you're not um if you don't have that energy of an alpha then that makes you weaker and in my experience in life a lot of my friends my brothers People that I consider extended family, the quiet ones have always been the most dangerous ones. Just so y'all know that. Just just in my circle. I can't speak for everybody else. And I'm going to be honest, a lot of the loud ones, Mm -hmm. by example I've seen or heard from my experiences, have been the less successful with getting their point across. That's the nicest way I could say what I really wanted to say. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You understand what I'm saying? For sure. But there is a there is a miss um there is a misunderstanding with the why we are doing certain things i love that men are being more vocal in today's climate because it's setting an example for the men that are younger than them mm-hmm. there at one point in time in our culture the only examples that we had after a post civil rights tv Hip hop, mm-hmm. sitcoms, mm-hmm. and I'm missing one more: hip hop, sitcoms, and black exploitation movies. So and that those, me- were, those were even bad because those kind of perpetuated a lot of like the male, um, some negativities of the the, the minority people the minority that the mini- the minority in our group that were yeah. that operated like that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But that's the example that we had because, like I said, post-civil rights, all of these leaders either went kind of like faded to black in the dark or were obviously removed from this earth. You yeah, understand what I'm saying? I, I, honestly, in my experience, my friends, I don't know any of my friends, bro. And I mean like close friends, people mm-hmm. who I talk to consistently who are not able to kind of express to each other. We talk to each other all the time on the phone. And I have several friends who will tell me and confide in me what they, what they experience in their relationships. And they don't sugarcoat it. They don't try to like seem tough about it. Mm-hmm. They will tell me what they've been through and they'll just be like, man, they're going through this, this and that. And it's not like they try to like, um, yeah, they're very open. Um, a lot of my friends and family members, mm-hmm. we cry. A lot of my friends and stuff will say, you know, we tell each other we love, I love you. Remember, I hit, I sent y'all at the, one time. Oh, yeah, I was like, I just thought about it. I was like, man, let me send my partner. Like, just because the thought crossed my mind, man, I love y'all, bro. 
I really think our generation as millennial, I think we're considered millennial wise. I'm trying to get that right. Right. We are one of those unique generations that are very comfortable with who we are and expressing to our loved ones, whether it's our extended families mm-hmm. that are known as friends or just even our male relatives. Hey, man, I love you and I appreciate you because sure. I mean, like I said, when you when you turn the clock back to the generations before us, it was so uncommon mm-hmm. that it was uncomfortable if it was said mm-hmm. and then it would turn into man you ain't getting soft on me as you mm-hmm. or hey hey man don't be hey hey don't don't do all of that soft right. because they did not get that opportunity to be that clear because two things could be true at the same time you could be very very sensitive and you could be somebody that nobody in the neighborhood should mess with mm-hmm. you understand or you could be very very in tune with who you are and your emotions but you can also knock somebody head off if you ever needed to mm-hmm. and i think that because uh, i didn't see that coming up too much like my dad definitely showed me affection my mom showed me affection but like uncles you know what i'm saying big cousins you know what I'm saying? It was it was considered kind of soft. Mm-hmm. It was considered like, ah, oh, man, you can't be out here. You know, even if you really didn't know how to fight that well, you, oh, man, you're kind of a sucker. Mm-hmm. And what we're starting to understand is like the damage, because now that time has went on, a lot of these people that were perpetuating that tough guy act are having a hard time coping with being alone, mm-hmm. and dealing with trauma that they that they buried and now that they're seeing that the world is different that person that they've been able to be for so long isn't accepted in the way the world is now now that behavior is considered toxic or you know what i'm saying misguided and you know do do you think that and it might it's it's part of like our same conversation but that that what you just said kind of like made me think like obviously during um the 80s there was a lot of life lost oh yeah for sure but you know that's a 10 year transition from you know from 80 to 89 Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the vulnerability that comes that has been created with black men specifically inner city black men is due to the life loss that we've experienced and I think I'll be thinking about this a lot because so many of us have lost so many friends and family members Mm -hmm. and understand that all of us are crying and sad Mm -hmm. that it's like shit I ain't the only one because I think that part of the the feeling of like I mean you ain't getting soft on me it's just like you feel like you the only one who cry Mm -hmm. you 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 don't know now that we know that this and it's, it's sad that a lot of us experience this um too often is that we are at we we are crying a lot mm-hmm. we hear about somebody passing away somebody and and due to uh violent crimes a lot mm-hmm. we're oftentimes all crying and experiencing the same amount of sadness and vulnerability when it comes to these situations so much so that now we're comfortable we're more comfortable mm-hmm. being okay like I got cousins and family members like when we get off the phone we used to like as teenagers be like alright bro love you cuz be, be safe bro mm-hmm. that's, com- be that's, safe. that's common in my in, in my family as well yeah it's like saying saying be safe I love you bro I love you cuz is however you say it like even if you're gonna say I love you mm-hmm is is it's sad that it comes it's a um byproduct of that but i feel like i think that might be what makes us more comfortable it's, well, it's a reality check for us to, to for us to make it more common to do it yeah you know what i'm saying so it's almost like the way we use it if we keep pouring that into our children in the younger generation it's gonna mean something different for them when they do it versus us because our generation kind of started out doing it as a place of fear Mm -hmm. versus when we pour it into the next generation it's going to come out as like nah this is mandatory we need this is a reminder that we got to show each other that we value each other at the end of the day and um and i think as time goes on it'll weed out that that stigma Mm -hmm. of being soft Right. Yeah. 
because you because like I said, we have that, and then like I said, we also have our spaces where now we could talk about like, hey man, yeah man, things is rough at the house, you know, because everything was considered like tough guy. When you listen to the music, if your girl was acting up, you just go mess with another one. If you you know if your woman was being like this, and some in some instances in black exploitation films, men was putting hands on them. Now that we're at a place. Where in our culture, a lot of us is like, hey, man, this girl is, well, what's going on? Well, well, have you looked at it like this? Well, yeah, I remember you told me that. Now you're talking about it. You're getting it out your system. Mm -hmm. And it's not coming off like, yeah, you know, I don't want to sound soft when I say this. But I could, we could just say it. And then now we're advising each other. You know, you have a married friend. You got a single friend. You got a friend that's in a great relationship, blissful or whatever the case is. But now it's more of a conversation instead of like, well, no, I can't explode. I can't expose that I missed that girl that left or I can't expose that I'm having problems in the house and, and I don't want it to, to escalate or whatever the case it is. Yeah, Our conversations we, are different. We we know there's different that there's different makings of who you are. There's like, yeah. there's uh you know when you create a player on uh WrestleMania two thousand, you gotta it took us how long <laughs> to create that player, right? Yeah. So you got good different example. attributes of who you are. It doesn't take away from you to have any of these so called um, vulnerabilities yeah that don't take away from your attributes yeah right so we kind of kind of understand that like oh I know you you've won you're comfortable enough to tell me about whatever you're going through right and, and would like my um, insight on it mm -hmm. but I know who you are and I know that I don't make you any less of a man or any less of who you are because of this part of you being vulnerable. That is even even more of a strength and a confidence. Right. So I I think our generation is getting is, is much better at that um, than our our parents pr most likely. Oh yeah, are, for sure. Oh yeah, we we're we're comfortable with a lot of conversations that they probably wouldn't even fathom to even mm -hmm. have a conversation about it with anybody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But. Also, kind of connected to this conversation, I also wanted to ask the question of like, with us as men, black men specifically, realizing how valuable we are to what we contribute in different parts of society and, and community, right? Was our standards. Okay. Sometimes our standards can be misunderstood. Uh, as soft okay. or sassy depending on who you talk to if you're talking to some sassy, you're talking to some tough sassy. dude and you say nah I gotta have this 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 like this ah man you overdoing it are you extra are you flashy or whatever and then when you're talking to women I need my woman to do ABC ah man you sass almost like um, I, I see it a lot when there's a debatable conversation and men and women are going back and forth in the comment section it turns into or like when somebody does a video in response to something, you know, I'll see the it's giving sassy or it's this. And what I find what I find humorous about it is that I remember a time when women were complaining about men not opening up. For sure. Now we're at a point where men are being very detailed and specific about what they think, how they feel and what's bothering them. And it's turned into sassy. Now. I do understand that I'm pretty clear on the age range of who's using that derogatory mm -hmm. way of looking at things. Um, obviously, they keep living and they'll understand. Mm -hmm. But what do you think about that? Um, that's a good topic to bring up because I was uh, I think we talked about the 20 balloons thing last time. Yeah, 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 we did. We did. So I just saw an episode or not even this episode. I saw a clip. I think we've seen the same clip, but go ahead. She was very pretty woman I mm -hmm. she was kind of tall I think she might have been same clip she looked like she could have been like Eritrean or Ethiopian like kind of like just based off of her presentation and her yeah yeah her so, features yeah so oh boy was wearing what now <laughs> so this is funny too because <laughs> your, your man blocked me on Instagram let's start there West Side Gun <laughs> I'm still downloading the album, bro. <laughs> I fuck with you. I was on some tipsy shit. I'm on, I'm on West Side Guns. Bro, did you get blocked by West Side Guns? <laughs> My nigga, that nigga blocked me on Instagram. So, 
I'm just talking shit just funny because, you know, fashion transitions. So yeah. There was this, it, it, yeah, it's different from... Mind you, yeah. I'm a skinny guy. Right. There was the skinny jean era. I, I was into the skinny jeans back when I was skating when, like, late, late 90s, early I 2000s. never wore tight clothes, dog. The skinny, Not since I was able to pick my own clothes out. But the, that was like, because me and my boy, we, like, we like haggard jeans. It was skate. We was like kind of into little punk rock shit. So... Skinny jeans became a fashion. Slim, skinny. Like, yeah. That's the only shit that they... At one point in time, they stopped wearing... Selling bootcut, baggy, regular... Yeah, you, it was hard to find relaxed that. Relaxed fit. Yeah. It was skinny jeans. Right. So, that became like the fashion trend. So, oh boy, he's wearing this slim, skinny jeans, I guess you would say. Mm-hmm. And she popped her balloon and she said she didn't like... She was passing on him because of the jeans. She liked. Her I jeans had a this bit. conversation with a couple people. I'm glad you brought it up. So, he asked her. He was. He asked. He 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 responded well. He asked her about her family and her um, makeup. She had three kids, three different fathers. And it said that she didn't want to really disclose that. She wanted she she wanted to lie about it. Remember, she Mind said you. that too. Now we're gonna give her. Okay, first one she said passed away. Yeah. Yeah, but you got you know two more. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm I'm at two right now. I'm not trying to roll the dice and make three. Um, but it's just interesting because the reason I bring that up is because in the fashion world now, black men, besides your your man Dwayne Wade mm-hmm. and and you know <laughs> the whole skirt purse thing. Yeah, black men have been becoming have become more comfortable in the fashion world. And dress and showing themselves dressing in different ways, right? Yeah. Skinny jean thing is kind of more of like a trendy thing. Yeah. It's it's a it's, it's becoming a thing of punk the past. rock. It's but becoming trendy. a thing of the little past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So when I told you, man, your West Side Gun, he was stunting on Instagram, like, yeah, man, you know my jewels, man. He was in front of the pairs. What's that shit? The, the Eiffel Tower. And all I said was, I was like, "Damn, skinny jeans in 2024 is crazy." I was, t- I'm perking, so he blocked but me. That's and, not and even a, said, that's not derogatory. If bro, he, if he, we, it if, was just, it just looked. I was like, "Damn, I ain't seen skinny jeans," because I be on Instagram, and so my algorithm shows yeah. more fashion forward shit. Yeah. So the reason I bring that up is because the guy who was on um, the show, the 20 balloon things, when she says she was passing because of his jeans, it was like. You passing on his jeans when one, like, are you looking for somebody who dresses? You look at, you, it's almost like you're looking like for ar- arm candy. Yeah, that can be changed. And you could maybe influence whatever with it when it comes to like dressing and fashion. Most women can kind of persuade their man, like, man, you yeah. don't really look good in that. I'm like, man, yeah. I'm not changing my clothes. I'm just going to put on some sweats. Most men will wear <laughs> you know something that if their girl likes a certain that they. We try to keep doing it. We'll do something. We'll to try to keep do. wearing yeah. something that they think that that we know they like or. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be honest. I haven't cut my beard in years because my wife like it. Man, my, you understand what I'm saying? My, so my daughter's mom, I started growing my hair more because she was like, man, I, I thought I was, you know, I had the waves going crazy. Yeah, so I, I like I like longer hair. I don't really like the waves. I was like, okay, let me start growing my hair out. He's about to go to dress back. Don't yeah. know about dreaded Poe. Yeah, I was about to start going crazy. <laughs> but it's like most men will kind of like be because you want to keep her eye on you. So yeah. you'll you'll do those things that you normally do that she likes. But yeah, you'll step out your comfort zone. But you know something. But who who you are and the attributes has and nothing to do with what you your accomplishments wear or purchase. She didn't ask him any of those questions. It was more like, man, you got on. It was well. It was on site. Skinny jeans. It was on site because you know they yeah. say you know how some people say like first impressions. Um, I remember first impressions is everything, right? Yeah. But now I'm starting to realize first impressions can be deceptions, for sure. Because I've I just in my experience in life, I've seen I've been in scenarios, especially like in high school or something, where I see a girl walk by who just looked like she didn't care today. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like she just got on some regular sweats, a sweater, whatever. And then like Thursday, I'm like, that's the same girl. Damn, she got like done up. Where's she going? We all grew up in the in the era where the 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 geeky nerdy girl or the dude in the movies, usually the girl, somebody. When they step up, out, 
It's over. Save the last dance. Yeah, yeah, all, yeah. I mean, movies way before that. Molly Ringwald, all kind of different movies where it was like, that didn't make up the person. And usually women would be more like, they don't give a fuck how men usually like. But see, in, see, in our culture though, see, she, was she exuded or was she exposed is a big issue that actually starts with young girls yeah. so she kind of exposed her immaturity yeah. because i remember and i know you remember growing up if you went to i don't want to even say a predominantly black but if it was enough black folks in your school girls really would not want to talk to you if you didn't have the latest fashion even as mm-hmm. young kids mm-hmm. and some of them mature and they grow out of it and they realize, man, that's all their everything past the fashion is nothing to talk about, right? But some of them they stay that way. Yeah, in adulthood, it's it's very. It odd don't even think. matter, man. You you don't even yeah. get to wear the clothes. A lot of us don't even get to wear the clothes that we like, the shoes that we like on a regular basis no. because of a dress code. Some companies have uniforms, or some companies um, require you to wear suits, or you know, looking presentable because of the type of clientele that they have. So, and and that's what makes it funny too, because the jobs where men can wear whatever they want, a lot of those women don't want those men, right? Whether you're a plumber, whether you're a barber, all those jobs where you don't have to wear a uniform and you can be as fly as you want to, as coordinated as you want to, they don't want them. But then if you do have a good job, but your fashion taste, which most... A lot of of men don't have the fashion sense. A lot of of successful, financially successful men don't really know how to dress. Yeah, most men don't really... I don't care what nobody says. Steve Harvey look crazy in his suits. Not even know. But he got a lot of money. Not even know. (laughs) But most, a lot of most men, in my opinion, don't really give a fuck. We really don't. We actually, a lot of the stuff that we've done, we do it for impressing a woman. Just a a yes. car. Yes. We want to make. There was a point where, there was a point where we yes. wanted a car just to be able to say she gonna talk to me because I at least got a car. Most yes. people don't. And then when you get a car, it's like I gotta have a fly car because she want to do. She want to step out and look good. A lot of this stuff. We inherited a lot of that competitive, flashy behavior from women when our job wasn't to be flat. Their job, I don't even want to say their job, but a part of who they are is to look good and beautiful and attractive and something that you just look at and admire from afar. Our job is to be strong, do the dirty work, don't take no, you know what I'm saying? And none of the the things that are part of a man's job, none of it is pretty. Mm Mm-hmm. Fixing stuff ain't pretty. Being tough and checking somebody in protection of your family isn't pretty. Right. It's not attract. It, it could be attractive to that woman. Ooh, we talk about protecting some. You know. You know what I mean. It comes to different another topic too. So, you know. You know what I mean. But just pointing that out, it's like that whole. That whole interaction, what I thought was crazy about it, when she said, yeah, I just don't really like your pants and this, that, and the other, I was just like, okay, is this show just hiring people at this point to just say crazy stuff? Right. And what? And when we talked about it last time, it just it made us look bad, you know what I'm saying, culturally. Yeah. Even though some of the things that were, a lot of the things, most of the things that's being said on that show... It's culturally true. It's really mm-hmm. people with those mindsets. Mm-hmm. So then a part of me is like, well, this really ain't scripted because I've seen this time and time and again. But usually a lot of these women hit 40, mid 40s, and all of a sudden it's like, you know what? You know, a, a person that work a little computer job ain't too bad or because they've been chasing that bad boy mentality, that tough, that tough yeah. guy mentality or that I'm a rich I'm a rich nigga mentality, mentality and, type and of situation. It, it was very odd, especially for that specific interaction, because she didn't seem like she was a woman in her 20s, probably yeah. early 30s. You have three children. Nothing wrong with having three children. You have three children. Priorities should be different way men. different. You're, yeah, what you're worried about is his pants. Did you say that you didn't say he wasn't an unattractive man? 
mm-hmm. and ask him about his aspect, like like what is his goals in life, aspirations. What is what is his aspirations? What yeah, is? Because you his, stopped it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I got I, I, I gotta look out for my brother. <laughs> that was one of those. Two, you know what a nigga get to? I, I forgot. I forgot what word I was gonna say. <laughs> I was like, nah, I ain't gonna let my brother go out like that, man. I know what you meant. He meant this. Yeah. Just in case looking, I thought he meant something looking, else. Good looking. <laughs> <laughs> look at good looking, good looking. It's definitely his aspirations. <laughs> Cause I also it's his aspects. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> but his aspirations, his goals, like, yeah. What is what is um, what does he do for work? You didn't ask any of those questions. You didn't even give him that, a chance because you'd already matter. popped the balloon. But you know what? That should matter. But for him, I thought that he wasted too much time, even engaging with her at that point because let me tell you from my from my perspective I look at it like this the minute he said oh, okay well how many kids do you have when she said three even if it ain't even three by even if it's three by the same man the minute she said three he should have been like okay thank you and then moved on he shouldn't have asked her nothing else because that showed me where her priorities is at you got three babies at home and you on a dating show I think I priorities think, is not I think he where they need to be with his um and ego? Nothing wrong, I think he was dealing with his ego at yeah. that point in time and there's nothing wrong to have his ego because it was like are you trying to talk about my pants like what you saying about my pants yeah like or maybe he's trying to figure like he was dealing with the is she trying to say something about my pants and then let me but let me be a gentleman about it and ask her question and then let me not like knock her down yeah but that was kind of like a egotistical response yeah it's just like dude just leave it alone yeah. because i mean him asking about kids and stuff like that mm-hmm. i felt like okay that's that's cool but he should have just left it at that because it's like clearly this woman isn't mentally where she needs to be because you shouldn't be on it like i said you shouldn't be on a dating show you know and that's what's going and, and and i would say this to all the guys that go on this show um you're not going to be able to make every woman happy with how you are dressed. But I will say this. Don't get so caught up in the fact that they won't give you a chance because of how you're dressed because they just saved you. They just saved you a lot of time, a lot of money and a lot of frustration because if a woman can't give time to at least see what a person is about, they're only looking at the cover of the book. That should help you understand why a lot of these women are in the positions that they're in. When you see a woman like that, that has multiple kids by multiple men, she obviously didn't take the time with those guys to vet Vet them. Mm-hmm. And say, you know what? Let me see what you're about. Let me see if you're even father material before mm-hmm. I decide to go any further on an intimate level. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So right then and there, if a woman is not even going to give you the time or day because she don't like your hair, she don't like the way you look, all the things that if you said you didn't like them for, they would flip out on you about. Mm-hmm. Take that as a gift and say, you know what? Cool. Because just like the dude that showed up and he was looking crazy he had the, the the plaid and all that stuff on and he was really in the anime and all that he found somebody mm. and that the one girl that he ended up walking out with they both had a connection because they both like anime so guess what all of y'all women that curve this dude now you that woman that's walking out with that dude is already doing better than y'all y'all still there waiting to be served yeah, you understand what i'm saying i, I should start more with like that's why I think that show uh, what was it um, where they, they matchmaker or on different sides of the wall or whatever you don't see this person and living color messed that up for me definitely did because definitely. when Wanda came around the other oh, side <laughs> I was like nah I would oh, never want to be on a show God. and that happened to me that's, nah. the, that's the bad part about it is like <laughs> and and for a lot of women y'all got sweet ass voices man yeah a lot of y'all got not the phone voice yeah 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 the phone but voice the phone voice can be dece- can be deceiving. deceiving it can be deceiving for women too cause you know Duke you gonna feel yeah what's going on whatever you know how yeah, you yeah, doing yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, she yeah, meet him yeah, 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 and yeah, you know he on, he only 85 pounds yeah, 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 you know what I'm yeah, saying he sit yeah, on phone books yeah, when he yeah, drive yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it is deceiving both yeah, ways yeah. but not uh, yeah I, I'm glad that I'm yeah. glad that era is over yeah. Cause <laughs> that era is so yeah, we gotta figure out how we gonna make these connections because we gotta like 
Maybe you see, yeah, yeah I think. I think which that. One, which one is more important? I'm going to be real. I think that, I don't know if the show already does it, but it doesn't look like they do. I think they need to get people that are like minded. When you fill out your yeah. application and your paperwork as far as what you're looking for, mm-hmm. then I think that should determine how your episodes go with who's going to be there. If you really are serious about trying to be a matchmaker, yeah. but. I do think that that show, because it's predominantly black people, mm-hmm. it does shine a light on the the way we prioritize the wrong stuff in what is when I see shows or when I see conversations, especially in the YouTube space about our men and our women, it's like trying to put magnets with the opposite sides together you yeah, know you take a magnet yeah. and you just can't put it together because the sides are, are, are opposite directions sure it's it's and, and it's crazy because at the end of the day, when you ta- if you take a room of three men and three women and they're going back and forth about who's at fault and who's wrong or right between black men and women, they're just going to argue, right? Yeah. But if you individually talk to them, you'll find out that all six of those people want the exact same thing. But because they can't get past about – because they can't get past – I'm right and you're wrong mm-hmm. and I have proof because I have three friends that went through it or I went through it myself because they can't get past those conversations. They would never even understand that they have a lot in common yeah. or they want the exact same thing. Get the dude who's geeky nerdy and get 10 of those geeky nerdy women. Yes. That are different, that they may have different looks or whatever, but they're all... I, it's a bunch of women that love playing video games nonstop. There's a bunch of women who are in into that like binge watching detective shows yeah, or whatever. There's somebody shit. for you. Yeah, but don't put the like. Obviously, you're getting your game is for numbers, not really matchmaking. You getting a get girl to listen to Sexy Red uh, in the same room trying to vet a guy that loves going to watch the orchestra. It's not gonna. Happen. <laughs> it's, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. You know what I'm so, saying? So, so the attributes should match more than the 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 looks. Mm-hmm. Have different looks, but the attributes match them up with like different attributes, and then see what happens. I think you you could have a more successful show with that, mm-hmm. even though you they they looking for the views. And I think that in 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 this culture, and when we talk about our values and dating or just this conversation that's continually happening there's two things that need to be understood well the first thing is you need to understand your self-worth like this is what i value about me this is why i'm important and then you also have to realize and this is the value i bring because what's important to you may not be the same as what value you bring to somebody Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and i think that that's what got lost with um, a lot of guys podcasting or put or posting videos about what women bring to the table. That's been misunderstood. And you've seen Steve Harvey kind of make himself look like an idiot on Shannon Sharp show with what a man can bring to the table or what a woman can bring to the table. Because at the end of the day, um, what you bring to the table is only important to depending on what table you sitting at. Yeah, because a lot of people don't eat the same type of food. Right. So that within itself needs to be a conversation. It, it is a good conversation. I do think more men should look at women and say, well, what does she bring to my life mm-hmm. that's going to make my life more easier? Because we already pretty much know whether a lot of men are doing it or not. We know what brings value to a woman's life. We know we got to work. We know we got to, you know, bring home the bacon or some bacon. We know we got to protect. We know we need to be decent. We know all of this stuff, but we also know what to do to make their lives easier since young men, because we've been trying to impress girls since we were little kids. I remember first and second grade. If there was a girl that I liked, that liked the, um, was it the little, I don't know if they're little dandelions where you pull the flowers, oh, she yeah, loves me, she loves me shit. not. Oh, or the, little, oh the, the ones you could pick the flowers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, if yeah, I, yeah. like I, yeah. we knew at a young age, if there was a girl that you liked that liked those, you go give her those. Yeah. Look, I got these for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or you can, you can cut me in line. Right. Or you can have my chocolate milk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We learn as a very young age what we need to do to bring, you know, that attention to a woman to show we got value. For sure. So I think that if, You know, men, first of all, you got to value yourself and you got to say, yo, this is why I'm important to society. This is why I'm important to my family, my friends and my job. And then you have to take some of those same attributes and say, and this is what value I could bring to the type of woman I want. And also knowing what can you deal with? Oh, hell yeah. Because you're not going to find a quote unquote perfect person. 
Yeah. It's going to depend on what are you looking for, what makes you happy, and what is it, what are you able to deal with because each person who may have these types of attributes that you're looking for may have these other attributes that you just not ha- may have not dealt with uh-huh. or things that you're just like uh, that irks me it bothers me but I can get over that because this person is providing these different things for sure um, yeah I, I definitely agree with that um, talking to people now that are uh in that space and I see a lot of people say oh the dating pool got pee in it and, oh yeah I, see, I hear I see that and I, see that. I don't believe that I know I'm married I know I've been married a while and I've been in a relationship before marriage for a while I just don't believe that because the type of person that I've been for a very very long time even as a young man like going to school I've always went for somebody that I liked, not sure. somebody that checked everybody else's boxes. For sure. And I definitely feel like and believe that in today's climate, there's a lot of different people that see the game differently. They feel like um I need to be with a person or I need to deal with a person that um has these requirements and kind of like when you see women i need a i need a, i need somebody that makes x amount of dollars now i'm gonna i'm gonna speak on this real quick and then we can kind of shift to a different direction this is advice for women when you guys say that you are looking for a man that makes a certain amount of money you don't realize how much you're exposing you you don't understand money when you say that you want a guy that makes anywhere from $250,000 to $500,000 annually, that is how much they gross. That is not how much they bring home after 401k, retirement, medical. You guys, let me tell you what y'all women need to be looking for, especially if you're a single mom. You need to find a man that has been working for it, that has been working for a job for multiple years that has health benefits Mm -hmm. and that has a good reputation with attendance to work Um, somebody that has good morals and values Mm -hmm. and somebody that understands their role and the significance in their role that has nothing to do with looks what kind of car they drive who they hang out with all of that stuff. It those those should be the standard requirements. Mm. The amount of money that a person makes a year does not define who they are. Because I just here's some some stats, or not even some stats, but just a reputation from what I've read in financial books. Because I do read financial books. A lot of these surgeons and people that gross a lot of money, they actually struggle financially. The mean expenses. Um, they don't manage their money well. A lot of these people that are making, and I say that with air quotes, a lot of money don't manage it well. And so if something were to happen to that person or that person's career that you're depending on their salary with, you could be back to square one or in a worse predicament because now you're married to them or now, you know, things go to hell. Mm -hmm. But I say that because I see that a lot online about how much a person makes. There's some people out there that only make 50K a year and got 40 in the bank. Because of how they manage their money, how they invest and things of that nature. You feel me? So I, that's just my advice to the women, because I think they need to hear that. And I think they need to go do research. You need to go do research on careers. Oh, by the way, um, more successful careers are entrepreneurs because a lot of women slash sisters make fun of people that say they're an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Um a lot of them can bring a lot more success to your family legacy than all of these careers. So just just do your research. Look at the numbers and and hey, you'll see that I'm not I'm not lying to you. I'm trying to help you. You feel me? I hear you. Um <laughs> we got to we got to address something, bro. Mm-hmm. So, and I sent you the clip cuz I was like, "Yo, we got to talk about it." That's we got a good transition. About. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
There was a there was a clip. I'm gonna try to add it to this to this episode of the video so our viewers can at least see what we're talking about, right? Sure. Um, if you guys are listening on the audio, you need to go to the YouTube video to see what I'm talking about when I try to edit it in there. So these men were having a conversation on the show, and Bruh said he would not die for his wife. Like if they were in a situation where they're getting shot at and she fall, he gonna keep running. He gonna keep running. This is get up. <laughs> Bruh, this is why it's, it's this one guy that would be the representation of see black men and men this is sassy and all but this is one guy but since it's just one guy who does not define the rest of us I thought that was a crazy I, I point I, of view I thought it was a crazy point of view but what's crazy is so I alright so me innately just in my character who I am I'm an overprotective person of my friends family members of anyone so I, I no instinctually doubt. Right. have always you want them out of way. harm's way I've always been that way so right. I can't fathom not turning around and doing whatever despite what could potentially happen to me but I had a conversation with my cousin some years ago and we were talking about um dying for our kids uh-huh. and this is a cousin that's not like no slouch no punk suck, none of that right? yeah. it's like man I'm, 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 if a motherfucker got a gun to my head or gun to my I'm not about to die for, for my kids <laughs> <laughs> bro what you was, know somebody that went to the same school as this guy right here nigga, you know this nigga <laughs> so I I was well, how, how they explained it, I had to respect their, the way that they explained it. Especially you got more than one kid. When you got more than one kid, this changes, this changes the dynamic of the conversation. Mm-hmm. I, me, I could just never imagine not being protective of someone who I love or in that scenario to turn around. I've never been in that type of situation to where gunshots were going off. But not turning. He said, "I'm gonna keep running." Yeah. But we didn't see the. I didn't see the full clip to know like what was his further explanation of. I don't really think I would want to know. Is he gonna say the kids is at home? Somebody got to get the kids. Dog, listen to me. This is how I'm gonna break this down because I'm because I'm gonna break this down by scenario. I'm gonna keep running wherever you are. You are at. But if you're in an environment. Where you could be potentially shot at, you. I'm holding you accountable to saving that woman because you shouldn't took it there in the first place. But let's just say, because we live in a society where things can pop off anywhere, sure. which we'll get to that later. Ooh. Shit, it could pop off anywhere. <laughs> it could pop off anywhere. In the middle of I think Butler, that the the problem is with this dude and what he's saying is he didn't say girlfriend. And even even that could be controversial, right? He didn't say girlfriend. He didn't say some female that I just reconnected with. You said your wife. Let me tell you something, so, sir. So let me tell. Let me let, do y'all part. Well, that part. <laughs> I didn't know you was gonna try to. I didn't know you was gonna try to expedite it. You know what I'm saying? But when we take a woman from her father. Because when you marry a woman, you are telling her father and her family that if she's she is now a hundred percent your responsibility. That's part of the job is protecting her. So, if you are saying you really don't get to choose who you die for, you get to choose who you try to protect, and in the midst of that, you might go down. But you don't get to choose who you die for because at the end of the day, the only person you will ever truly die for is yourself. So let me ask you this. But Go ahead. Yeah, protecting you. yeah. your woman, protecting your kids, I have, a, I have a strong stance on that too because those people are the two, those people in your family, your wife and your children are the two most vulnerable people in your house mm-hmm. because your adversary knows that. Your adversary knows that's your soft spot. No matter how tough, how gangster you is, your adversary knows how to get your attention through them, right? Mm-hmm. But I would say this. If I'm in a situation where there's an ultimatum and they like, yo, either you or her, I'm not even going to trust that that person is honorable 
enough to honor my decision. So I'm probably going to go out you by gotta, trying to overthrow have, the situation. That, that's the scenario of where I tell um, any of uh, any woman that I'm um, associated with, even my son. Uh-huh. And we'll get back to like the, the topic. Once they say, put your put these handcuffs on or let me tie you up or get in the trunk. You have to be willing to die to me. You're not helping yourself by, oh, man, if I let them tie me up, they'll just let me Mm -hmm. live. So now you're tied up. Mm -hmm. Now you have less, even less of a chance of a sister helping protecting anybody. Get in the trunk. Right. Okay, now I'm in the trunk. Right. So with those type of situations where it's like, all right, um, they're going to try to shoot her. Well, now I have to die trying. Yeah. That's just the way you gotta I go 50 logic cent on them. About. I got I'm a dodge. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, but I'm wondering like if his thought process was, well, bitch, we in this situation because you was talking shit. <laughs> you was talking crazy to this nigga. Now he's shooting at us both. Maybe it's that. Maybe. Yeah. And she didn't protect him. Yeah. By not popping off at the mouth. Right? Well, because there's a certain responsibility that well, a lot keep of women it, have to keep to it too, right? to keep it G with you. I would try to avoid all controversy when I have vulnerable people with me right. at all costs. Right. And I have cousins that can vouch for that because some years ago my cousins was finna get into it with some homies and I turned into day day. I was like, I, I gotta stay here when y'all leave. <laughs> but at the end of the day, yeah. the, the, the truth is, uh-huh. I really kept the matter because number one, like you don't get sent to the principal's office when you get in a fight in public. You no. go to jail. Yeah, for sure. You understand what Different I'm saying? And we were celebrating my cousins, my cousin's uh, birthday. Shout out Jay Brown. And what ended up happening was it was a, it was something that was going to escalate. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I got love. I got love for y'all for some of my homies that remember that night. My cousins with a dog jaw, mm-hmm. so I was really doing y'all a favor because I grew up with these cats. And they they with it in a way that you won't understand it. You know what I'm saying? So I was really saving my friends by pulling my cousins back. You understand what I'm saying? But that could have escalated. Because even though these is my homies, I ain't seen these cats in a while. They might be the type of people that move a certain type of way. And now one of my family is hitting it. It could just escalate beyond. You know what I'm saying? So I come from a place of trying to diffuse the situation because I remember... The times where I have been in fights and I've been in some very sticky scenarios, I'll never forget like how much anxiety I would have during and after where, you know, your hands are shaking and you just like, man, did that just happen? Or like, I can't believe, you know what I'm saying? And it's been a long time since I felt that way. I don't want to go back to that when it comes to being in confrontations and fights and stuff like that. Especially the older you get. Yeah. So I understand bros like, I mean, I know we was talking about self worth, but damn, dog! Yeah, nah, like, nah, nah, nah. he was trying to survive. <laughs> he was trying to. He was trying to maintain that self worth. Like, yeah, just thinking like if we're both running, right? I know first, I'm faster than her. I'm stronger than her, right? And if she fall, you not looking back is crazy, right? That's wild. Not looking back is crazy, and not turning to try to help her. He's shooting at us, bitch. You better get your ass up. I like. I don't know, man. I just. I think he was going extreme with his thought process. Yeah, because that's a very organized scenario to be in. You know what I'm saying? Nine nine times out of ten, I'm going to guide my family to a safe scenario. If anything, I would probably be like, "You do this." I'm going to run to di- to create a diversion, yeah. but it's like it's both of y'all running. We both and, running, and she go down, and you like I don't hear no steps. <laughs> like for y'all to both be <laughs> they got their man, someone, someone shooting at y'all. <laughs> that's that a person. movie. That's a movie. <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. It's not happening, man. Yeah, like, but I just I just thought it was crazy because it's like nah, bro. Like you have to have a better mindset and a better and and have a better job at like protecting, you know, your family. Because what if she pregnant? Yeah. You talking about? Well, I'm gonna be real. Well, I'm gonna be real. Kids. Some y'all some of these, but some of these cats that be talking like that, like, oh well, like, like I'm gonna tell you like this. Some of these women got brothers, and the last thing you want yeah. brothers and uncles and dangerous people. Let, let them cats find out you left their sister, their daughter, their niece somewhere. And uh, I remember, um, who was it? Was it Will Smith? I think it was Will Smith doing an interview with somebody. 
and they was talking about dating his daughter. And he said, as long as you don't put your hands on her or ever leave her anywhere, we good. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know if it was him saying it, but he was in the interview. I don't know if it was him saying it or somebody saying it to him, but I respect that a lot because those two scenarios are very, very, very huge as far as in the safety of his daughter. You got a daughter. I got a daughter. You understand what I'm saying? We we have plenty of, of, of our brothers that we close to that have daughters. And I just think, I'm just thinking like for some somebody to say something like that, you must not like, she must not have no men in her life for you to really think about what you're saying before you're saying it. Because if somebody leave my daughter behind in a violent situation, they not going to find them. Well, you I understand mean, what I'm saying? Unless you little Dirk family, they don't, they get shit popping. <laughs> they, when, when, it's, when they came in the house, the wife let the shots off. Yeah. His, then you just heard about his, I don't know if it's his son or his stepson. They keep saying it. So little Dirk, what I thought, what, what I think was his son, mm -hmm. or it could be his stepson, and they just, there's multiple kids in the scenario. Mom is getting physically handled by a dude, right? Ten-year-old. Shot his ass. Popped him. Mm. Popped him on camera. This is on camera. This is the video. The, the ring camera shows the, the dude is... Being physical with the mom, the little boy got the gun. Somebody tried to like, nah, no. Nah. They go up, the 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 movement go to a different part of the street, mm -hmm. and pow, he shot his ass. Mm. So there are some people who just innately like. I know as a kid, mm -hmm. protection was crazy. Like my mom didn't answer the phone at the beauty salon on MacArthur. <laughs> he on told MacArthur, me this story. Right? <laughs> East Oakland, bro. MacArthur what you and, do? and Fruitvale. What you do? My mom didn't answer the phone. The beauty salon didn't answer the phone. I didn't want nothing. It was just, I was, call, you know how you call him? I'm like, like they, this is abnormal. Man. Somebody normally At pick the up the phone. Salon, yeah, they, they somebody pick up the while, phone. But yeah. I'm, I'm like, I just, I don't know what I was calling for. They didn't answer the phone. She didn't answer her cell phone. I called several times. Nobody picked up. Right. It wasn't just the first call. Like, I, ain't nobody picking up. Right. I grabbed that bat. I walked down Didn't it say protect black women on the back? And my, I might have wrote that motherfucker in there. It might have been in that motherfucker. Grab that shit and walk right into the damn beauty salon. Uh, who, who little boy is that? And my mom turned around with, you know, the, the chairs facing the back of the, the yeah, door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harold, I'm like, man, why y'all smiling and laughing? Why you ain't answering the phone? <laughs> I believe at that time I had to be at I think I was 10 I So you I hopped 10. on the bus no, Or I mean, did you I, walk This was a walk This was a oh. This wasn't nothing but like This was probably like Six, seven blocks But I walked down there, And as I'm walking I know I The way you, you You know how you hold a bat So you was holding a bat Not like you was going to practice Yeah it wasn't like I was like oh, I'm finna go to the park It was like one of them you, Niggas I seen people looking at me Like how I was holding the bat <laughs> He holding that bat like you holding the bat in the middle like yeah now I'm about to go up yeah I'm fucked up like that yeah. was the type of the way I was holding the bat so I know people was looking at this little boy but that type of mindset I think for some people it's just instinctual yeah you it's instinctual like I no gotta protect choosing yeah. who you are being protective of mm -hmm. you are in you're gonna do it or not. It's yeah. not like a choice or a thought process that goes behind that for, mm -hmm. for a lot of people. And for me, that's not a thought process, something I would even, I don't think about that. Like, mm -hmm. what I'm going to do right, who, duh, it's like, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, for sure. I, I've had to hold back with how protective I could be, whether it was my mom, especially like, especially like the wife. Mm -hmm. I be wanting to butt into a lot of even just conversations just to get an understanding of like and I've had to say like something on social media like once or twice and because that's not really my stilo you know hey man it was good hey man delete that and I'm like nah that need to stay right there I need you know but I'm very protective over my household I'm protective over the last name on the back of that jersey you see what I'm saying but because I'm protective and because I know how extreme I can go, I try to teach my people and my tribe how to protect themselves mm -hmm. 
before they press that button for me to get involved. Mm-hmm. So that's my way of being protective now is like, this is what you do. Like, like not that long ago, I was showing my son how to punch my hand. I was like, mm-hmm. punch, mm-hmm. punch, punch. Not because he needs to, you know what I'm saying, get ready to fight a whole bunch of toddlers. But you just at least need to know how to throw a I proper need you punch. to know how to throw a punch. You know what I'm saying? Whether it connect or not, you yeah, just whether connect or not, just you, how to this throw is, a punch. you know, this is how you throw a punch. He might love to watch boxing. This mm-hmm. is how you do what they do on TV. It doesn't everything doesn't have to resort to being violent. For you sure. know what I mean? But my my goal now with my loved ones is to teach them where they can protect themselves so what bro man saying that i'm not even gonna look back it's like bro you sound like the type of person that wouldn't even teach somebody to not fall in a situation because of how vital vital the 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 scenario could be that that was just a wild one you're gonna that's a wild one you're gonna outrun her (laughs) and then not look back and you're not looking back that's wild like i'm gonna meet you down the street (laughs) She like that's a crazy one. Yeah, he uh, the type of person. If she did fall and made it, they get in the car and he'd be like, "Yo, you just how you gonna fall?" That's crazy. That's how you crazy. gonna fall? I remember uh, uh, before we, before we switch gears. I remember uh, her ass uh, fell, man. She be bullshitting. Who was it? Uh, Tony Roberts. I was watching one of his oh, standups, shit. and Tony oh, Roberts shit. was like, "Yeah, man, I had a bodyguard. He gonna get knocked out." I was like, "Bro, how you gonna get mad?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how you, you going to get mad? That's how Rick Ross felt. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's some. There's always a bigger fish, man. Somebody got fired after that. There's always a bigger fish. That's why you have bodyguards. Yeah, 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 yeah. A bodyguard can be dealt plural. with. I don't care how tough. Plural. Bodyguards, all right? You never seen that shit happen to 50. 50 is his own bodyguard. Yeah, but 50 is going... You see how he's throwing them chairs and shit at the... You know, at the restaurant, but fifty. Yo, why is he going. always in scenarios with chairs? Because I remember when he was beefing with uh, uh, the Supreme Team and uh, a Bangham Smurf or Bangham Smurf, and remember the beef DVDs, and I they showed up to New his York concert, thing. and they he they threw a chair at him. This was like do rag hat fifty. Mm-hmm. They threw a chair at him, and he caught it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I was I like, th- yo, what's this? I think what's this superpower fifty I, got with chairs? I think man? that's a New York thing because. Uh, um, it must be a New York and Jim, Montgomery Jim, thing Jim because Jones they they crazy with chairs and, uh, out there in Montgomery too. Max B and them was throwing chairs at each other. French Montana they was throwing chairs like heavy they, WWE fans. Yeah, a lot of WWE. <laughs> fans. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you did bring up Fifty, and um, woo. did you know? And you guys are gonna know what we're talking about, obviously, unless you're living under a rock. Forty five. So forty five cents. You know when crazy. Fifty was performing at his show, Reese. This like just happened. He was performing at a show, and he had the "Get Rich or Die Trying" album art up with your boy Trump's face on his face because of what happened the other day with uh, the uh, the attempt. I don't know. Oh, I don't. I don't know YouTube guidelines, man. so I gotta say the attempt. That was yesterday. What? The, that Fifty did that. No, the attempt was yesterday. That's what I'm saying. So but, the, the, but, the the meme that we all saw, that was yeah. prior to. Yeah. No, 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 no. The meme was post what happened right. with the attempt on Trump. So, yeah. So man. 50, 50, that dude is a marketing genius. Listen. Now, let me tell you. So for, so for those that are trying to act like they didn't know, there was an attempt on former President Trump's life. He during- had one job, bro. <laughs> That's what my mama and them said. Man, he had one motherfucking job, man. <laughs> did you see the way? You, did you see the the uh, the the uh, the shooters? You see how he looked? I, well, slumped on the roof. No, like they had. I guess they got photos of him prior. No, no I haven't seen prior to the end results no, of his seen, actions. I haven't seen pictures of the shooter. Bruh, I just look crazy. Like. Like um, the hills have eyes. Ooh, one of them West Virginia type niggas. Yeah, bro. It, but the, okay, so the crazy thing is, from what I read, because I it happened right after I got off the phone with my mom, right? Uh huh. Um, the text is hilarious because I got off the phone with her, and then she called me right back, and I was doing something, and then I got a text that said they tried to get Trump. And I was just like, man. And she kept hitting me. And so far, I got on the phone with her. She told me what happened, and then I started seeing it all over social media. But she, because my mom came over yesterday too. Oh, word. Yeah, she came over to see the kids or whatever. And so she goes, um, she said that prior to it happening, people that were there at the rally were saying they seen somebody go into the woods. 
Oh, I didn't. I didn't hear about the people saying that they saw somebody going to woods, but there was uh, several. Oh, they said somebody was going up pointed, on the roof. Pointed yeah. to the dude on the roof. Yeah. Um, pointed to the dude on the roof. He let off his shots. Now they saying that the teleprompter is what the shrapnel from the teleprompter is what hit his ear. I don't know what teleprompter is to the side of a person, but it could have been something else on. Yeah. Whatever. His accuracy. Had Trump not turned like this, man, I feel like it. I feel like it was a bullet. It could have been glass. They said it was glass from the teleprompter. I don't. Yeah, know. it looked like it was maybe a graze or. Um. Trump might be the most gangster. Like, <laughs> bro, you were saying this in the group, man. Like, <laughs> bro, I'm gonna keep it honest. Dude is, it, it, he he has, the life story, of a rapper. Of a rapper, bruh. Of a gangster rapper, though. Yeah. My man extorting people. I don't want to hear nobody complain about gangster rappers no more if you if you looking at this as a type of martyr martyr situation. But go ahead. That man is extorting people. He's he has several felonies. He's doing what he wants. He's making threats to other people. And my man just survived the shot, got up. Said no 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 let me get my shoes on. I think he when he went like this, I think he said, Man, y'all got me fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about when he threw the fist out there? When he threw the fist up there, I said, Oh nah. I might change my vote, man. I might vote Republican this year, dog. Look, dog. I might. I'm voting for me. Um <laughs> I told my mom. When when this first happened and it was still fresh on piece. social media, I said that just elevated him what? to another level. She was like, "What? Do you, she was like, you think so?" I said, "No, this what? is going to intensify the support for sure that he's going to get because he's already being he was already being treated as the underdog in the situation because he lost the the election against." Biden Mm -hmm. but now because when you're loyal to a party when you're loyal to anything and the thing that you're loyal to is getting challenged with crazy adversity that just amplifies your support for sure people that were skeptical now want to support Mm -hmm. and now the narrative can be spinned of see they're afraid that this person is going to get to this point so they're trying to interrupt it or because let's be real as a culture we do it a lot you Mm -hmm. know we do it when it can when we want to protect our own and we look at certain things was like see look they had to change the rules in order for us to lose or they changed the rules on us and we still won because we've always had to fight most of our fights with our back against the wall fighting uphill. Shit, support so, went up for, for Pac after he got shot. Yeah. Support went up for 50 after he got shot. Yeah. Absolutely. YG, the list goes on. You know what I mean? Um, but what I want, what I want to make clear is for any of these folks that is speaking on Trump, saying that, you know, kind of putting him to a martyr status because you know, there was an attempt on his life. I don't want to hear nothing about any rapper that gets shot saying, well, they deserved it or any of this stuff or, you know, that's because they talk too much because, you know, we are students and fans of hip hop. And I've seen some of the craziest things being said about people that did not walk away from a from um, a gun battle or you know somebody shooting them I, I seen I seen a lot of the disrespect um, on Nipsey when believe it or not as many people that would celebrate Nipsey I seen some wild stuff because it was a video that came out on Nip when I think I feel like he was like near the slots and he was near the hood it was him and Lauren London and somebody was like following him with the phone and stuff like oh, that the, the two uh, was it the camera people yeah. that he was gotten on he told him he said they said aren't you a rapper he said first of all I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a gangster I'm a, I'm a rolling 60 crip first. yeah yeah and he was trying to explain, like, you don't roll up on no no gangster with that because I don't know what your intentions are. Right. That's my, ha- you know, that's my, my, my trauma, right? So when I looked at the comments, the comments was the most, some of the most disrespectful comments. One of the things I hate about social media, I was like, oh, that's why he got shot. And that's why this happened. And see, ain't that guy passed away now? So it's like, okay, 
again, hypocrisy. You're gonna, you know, something happened to somebody. You're gonna raise them up because they survived through it. If they didn't survive through it, it's like, well, see, that's what you get. That's why there's too many people thinking they know what God's job is. You feel me? And I just look at this situation with Trump. I was like, man, that probably won that man the election. Oh, for sure, I believe it. Um, for me, I have several different opinions about different aspects of this whole situation. Like, one, it, it is crazy to me that when when people are saying. Um, that they almost wish that he really would have got killed. To me, that's wild. To me, regardless of whatever his like his stances or yeah, I'm not gonna support his death. I'm not celebrating nobody I'm going not down. I'm not celebrating nobody. Death. I just I'm not that. That's crazy. me being God fearing. I'm not that bold. Yes, yeah, I'm not, not like, that bold to be like, aha, yeah. See, that's you. y'all. Yeah, listen. Maybe some of y'all has, are not God fearing, but yo, I, I'm cool. That he, I, he that's hasn't. Wild. He's not a Hitler. No, he's not. He's not somebody who needs to be removed from living. Maybe because we just of don't agree their with views. his viewpoints and the, his practices and things like that. But as far as like, I don't know of any murders or killings or anything that he's been a part of for me to say yo he need to be out of here yeah also it's crazy to me when people said immediately man that was staged and I'm like yo you gotta understand that's what y'all said about Suge too like he sat in the car and said hey shoot that nigga up next to me and just make sure the bullets just graze me and just go by me just don't just make sure I the think, bullet don't hit me I think because we're in a time where the way things happen is so unexpected, but because we are also in a time where so many fake things look real. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Now, we know for, like, now, looking back, I'm sure some of those people are like, oh, this was kind of like the Chris Rock and, and Will Smith thing. So many people is like, man, that stage. They both are actors. They're both entertainers. And then when you start slowing things down. And you start looking at tones and facial expressions and and things like that. And then you look at the aftermath of how things went. It's like, oh, that was very real. But I think that's I think that's a natural um, response well, when you're when you're shocked. Started with September 11th. Yeah. When it started, it started with, you know, building seven and all those different type mm -hmm. of conspiracy theories to where now we just don't believe anything that happens. But also kind of like what, wrestling. We would say wrestling was fake. It was scripted. Yeah. The, the, the injuries was real for sure the scenarios were scripted well a lot of people also were like man that don't sound like no gunshots and I'm like well have you ever heard what a gun shot sounds like when because it's one there's a bullet breaking a, going through a sound barrier so he's not like right up on the mic and area and shooting and you hear the gun or it's a couple most of, of these people away. don't know what guns sound like this, being this shot. is a far this is a bullet being shot from a certain distance yeah. to where you hear the pop and then you see like it takes a a, a a point in time for the for us not only to react our reaction time register what's going on and yeah the bullet once you hear the pop the bullet doesn't hit immediately. It's mm -hmm. like a a, 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 um, a gap between how long that bullet was shot and then reaching time the of target. travel and then, then right. reaching the target. Yeah. So you're not hearing the gunshot right up close. You're hearing pops because that's how it sounds from the bullet and whatever the the gun, how far it is from yeah. from you. So I I look, when I heard it, it go pop 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 because the person who told me about it. Well, I thought that I was, was in the garden response. chilling. <laughs> Chilling, minding my business. Somebody said, "Man, they're trying to take out Don." I said, "Who? They try to take Don?" Bro, this out. sound like a, you know, when like battle rappers be talking about how the battle was initiated. Yeah, man, yo, I was smack just called me. Smack I was just chilling in the garden. They was like, "Yo, want to see me?" And I was like, "Yo, I'm just cooking in the garden." Yeah. That's, that's just what it reminded me of yo, when you said that. I was I was in the garden, business, man, man, and they I told was, me man. they was trying to hit your boy Tr. Said, "Man, the DT, <laughs> man." Don't try. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I one believe everything that happened happened. I don't believe that. And one, they're saying that this individual was um, Republican. What? Yeah, they're not saying that this. Because, you know, 
They're not well, saying. Me and my mom talked like, about it. Yeah. My mom was like, "Man, yo, how long do you think they gonna think the Biden system?" I was like, "Yo, this is turning into a rap beat." Look, because you know there are there are listen. If there Biden are, wanted this man dead, or Biden tried to kill his kill him, y'all think that Biden is gonna? Do you know how many different ways they can get it done? They got. Um, What's her name? Princess Diana. Car accidents is one of the easiest ways they're going to get it done. Mm -hmm. They're not going to try to just shoot you at a rally or something. If this they is, want this you is done, old school. Get it done. This is old school 1960s style. Yeah, they're going to get that shit done if, they, if it's But the you know that anymore. there's people that support Trump that probably do believe that Joe Biden is really Joe Budden and this is a rap beef. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. And it's like, nah, there's... Listen, if you guys can believe... With all of the the domestic attacks that's happened here on this soil, if y'all can believe all of those are real, right, then you got to understand that some people will go rogue, will be on some solo stuff. Now, the thing that is surprising to me is that if you're saying that this person was Republican that did that, that is wild. To that's, me. What, that's what I've heard. I, it have, hasn't been confirmed, but what I'm thinking about is, okay, they say he was 20 years old. Wow. Right? He's 20 years old. Think about this. Kid. 20 years old. To us, he's a kid. Four years ago was what? What year was it? 2020. Yeah, that is wild. Think about what these kids have experienced and the what the, the world they've grown up into. To where they he was become, twenty, so he was sixteen when they become like conscious and and like really paying attention. So being a to radical, feeling like yo, four years ago you you are the, so in in that person's mind, it's like you did this to my livelihood four years ago, and now you could be in a position to affect it more four years later, and then you just go off the deep end. And just what the world that, what that the is crazy. We were experiencing in the world from. 2020, 2021, yeah. January, the, the, January like 6th. Every, every yeah. year there's been some type of um, event that has been the times that we're living in are. So he's. So this person is Gen Z. Yeah. The times we're living in That's are wild. like almost unprecedented in, in how much we're dealing with year after year the things that we're experiencing in America. And it's just, uh, it's very crazy. One, this happened on live TV. Ronald Reagan, that happened on, on, on TV as well. JF, it was JFK as well? JFK was recorded. On, I think it, I don't know if it was on live TV, but it definitely was on TV. But just imagine, bro, imagine if he would have got, if he really would have got smoked on TV, bro. Um, Just imagine that. I think it would have been very... Uh... If that would have happened, and by the way, um, I'm not a fan of both. I'm not a fan of Biden. I'm not right. a fan of Trump. Not that I owe anybody that explanation, but just so we don't get confused with any bias. Right. I, I think that if that would have happened, that would have been a very, very vulnerable moment for this country, for everybody that's just kind of waiting in the cuts. To try to make a move, they said because of the disarray and shit. I don't know if it would have started a civil war. Yeah, I don't know if it would have been no Captain like, America. Civil like, oh, war. like who's gonna shoot who for what? Yeah, but I I do think that uh, politics is very divisive. That's why they don't even allow it in the job, the conversation in the job as well as religion. But I think that would have sent a message, uh, a clear message to other countries. Like, yeah, see, yeah, they not the same. they already feel that way. You know, they already feel that way about the United States because, I mean, just alone, like the arrogance of this country, people feel like the United States is, is North America. No, we're a country in North America. You know what I'm saying? So just that arrogance and that ego right there. But to see it take a take an L, that ego take an L, that's going to have this country look in a certain type of way to where it's like, oh, yeah, we yeah, we got them. So. No matter how you feel about Biden, no matter how you feel about Trump, there are certain things you don't want happening to a former president when there are a lot of people that's aiming a slingshot in this direction. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, shit could get dark real quick, like, like literally cyber style. You know what I'm saying? It could get dark like for real. So it, to me. Uh, and it's crazy because just before this happened, I talked to my mom. I talked to my mom about a lot of this stuff. Um, earlier this week, I was telling her everything that we lived through, mm -hmm. like our generation from 
in ninth grade when night when nine eleven happened all the way until you know dealing with the anthrax scare to dealing with uh the the crisis in 08 hold on let me hold you before that our generation is the generation that has dealt with Columbine. Yeah, Columbine was in sixth how, grade. And has, we were in sixth grade when that no, happened. No, no, Columbine. I was in sixth grade. I remember my sixth grade teacher talking about it. I was in sixth grade. Yep. We were in sixth grade, brother. I'm thinking we was in fifth grade, bro. You sure sixth? Sixth grade. Because my teacher, my sixth grade teacher. What year was that? Oh, man, I thought it was I, fifth I ain't grade. that sharp. On, I ain't that sharp in the mind. It could have been fifth grade. I think it was fifth grade. It could have been fifth grade, the but I, I, I think I put that in my mind is because me and my friends got in trouble for having a. Um, it was like six of us had a gun at school. Fourth grade, one of my friends a brought real a, gun. My when my partner his, he brought his stepdad gun to school. We That's all played wow. around with it, messed around with it, had the gun at school, and um, they gave us a slap on the wrist. We got suspended for like two weeks. Damn, two weeks is a long time. That's a susp- nigga. Show up with a gun at school now. Yeah, you going to jail, nigga. They you out of this so you out of there. You out of there. So the I think the next year it could it was ninety eight. So it it, it might have been like beginning of. Sixth I was grade. in sixth grade in ninety eight. Might have been a get, beginning of sixth grade because you just grade reminded me because my sixth grade fifth class sixth was the last class for that school before they cut it off at fifth grade. Okay, so it I was ninety eight. It was ninety eight. Elementary and fifth. So it might have been like the end of the beginning of sixth grade mm-hmm. or maybe like the summer or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. Not could have been the summer, uh, but the beginning of sixth grade or something like that. So we'll say 98. Yeah, we'll say 98. Um, so 98 we was. We lived through all these school shootings. Yeah. That's just part of our norm is the, is the, is shooting. Yeah, that's awful. That's that is, like that's like, that's like common. Especially just friends and family members mm-hmm. and all that. Like that's a norm. Yeah. So the, 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 up the, Upright, well, I don't say uprising, but the up in percentage of attacks in schools, mm-hmm. as far as the shootings, and then the, like you said, then it was nine eleven, mm-hmm. and then you know, like I said, the anthrax scare, two thousand eight crisis, Iraq war, Afghanistan, um, and then you know, pretty much the prime of our thirties, we hit a uh, um, a pandemic. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, we've, we've lived through. I don't. I, I think. Mean, hey, hey, I, think I think our elders need to 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 rethink how soft they think we really are. Yeah, like, with everything that we lived through. And maybe we got to rethink about how we think about these youngsters too. <laughs> well, yeah, because well, some of these things they were really really young to understand. Right. You we, know what we, I mean? We've been there since but, the beginning of it. But I would say like around that. Midway of when Obama was in office till now, they've still experienced a lot because some of the things that we were aware of, we understood how that was affecting the economy when they really didn't have a want in the world, but their parents was probably going through hell. You feel me? Right. So, yeah. But but you saying that younger generation, you know, because this dude is a Gen Z, it kind of brought me to an interesting article that I seen about 46 percent of Gen Z depend on their parents for our financial support that is a very um that is a large number that's a big that's a big and number. and i don't even say that as a dig at gen z i just no. the thing that that came to mind with me was this is how bad things are when you look at the fact that the these are young adults very young adults mm-hmm. still needing the financial support of their parents because the economy is crazy right now and then you look at the fact that politics is the most ghetto topic that you could really talk about right now between what's going on between the Democrats and the Republicans. Like, man, I did not see being an adult when because, you know, when you think about being a grown up when we were kids, you think about your 30s. I never thought about my 20s as being a grown up, but I think about my 30s and I and, and when I looked into the future, I never considered how different the world would be and how wild things would be but to hear that Gen Z is having that hard of a time it kind of makes me wonder like oh is that why some of y'all women want somebody that make 200 to 500k Man, I, a year I, because it's that bad financially because that's crazy numbers I want to see what the numbers are for Gen X like what do you mean like how like if they're dependent on their parents yeah I mean well my personal experience I've had to be kind of dependent on 
uh, my mom for several years, just not because of because I didn't make. An, uh, I mean, there was times where I didn't make enough, but just the situations where I was in, it was like I might have had a good income, but my expenses were just crazy to where I needed support. And it was 40 hours isn't enough to feed your family or yourself anymore, man. Hell no, especially once you get to a certain um, income bracket. Maybe you don't qualify for a lot of things. I, I believe the reason why a lot of us, whether it's our generation and older or even a little bit younger, is getting into entrepreneurship is because they can't control their income. Their income is literally regulated by a job that is required requiring you to do more than what they're paying you to do you see what i'm saying and so what it is said is like well man if if i gotta if i gotta ask you what days i could be off and i gotta wait for you to tell me how much money i deserve more every year i might i might as well bet on myself you see what i'm saying but when i it's kind of a saddening thing to see like yo gen z Really is dependent on their parents, and I'm gonna be honest. Gen X is, is big. Gen X is probably just now touching some bread. Just now, yep. Just now touching some bread. I just told bread. you. <laughs> I just told you at the beginning of the podcast what what financially I've been doing. Yeah. Quite well. Yeah, that's true. Months. That's true. And Gen and Gen X is clearly in those late 40s to early 50s. You see what I'm saying? And they and that is even statistically. As men, especially black men, but as men, we don't see the 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 prime of our finance, our financial income until until, until about 40s. 40, 40 something, 50 something years old. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. It's like, oh, now I got enough money to really, OK, you know, what, my son, you know, my son needs a down payment for a car. I'm going to just slide in that five bands, you know, or my daughter, you know, she needs somewhere to stay. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get her an apartment, you know, you know, that. that brings up because I really do be confused when I see it. I'm, and maybe it's because people got. um credit cards or some shit man. oh yeah it's be a lot of people out here doing these vacations man and i'll be like god damn like how y'all doing that shit like man, i, I know a know. plane ticket costs this much i know the hotel stay costs this much and you if you go to another country you got to get that passport yeah, that like, passport ain't the cheapest y'all money management is just good or there's passport bros maybe um, passport bros are supporting it but like I see a lot of vacations and I kind of like think back like damn am I not doing enough nah I used to I used to I used to go back and forth with that thought too but this is what I learned and I learned this actually when, when we were looking to buy a house before we bought our house right uh -huh. my realtor said um, if you ever notice when you see a young person with a really 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 nice car a lot of times they live at home and I was like what and at the time I started thinking about scenarios where I had certain peers that had like we're not talking like a nice car because it looked good and it's kept in good condition I'm talking about cars that's the, the new 40 shit. bands and up you know what I'm saying and it's like yo man I know where you work right yeah that's really what it is it's, a, it's just like when I see certain influencers Smoking or I see mirrors. certain people yeah it's definitely that and because what a lot of these really beautiful women and it ain't just the women that's doing it so let me let me say that it's, it's men too a lot of these beautiful women you know you see them on trips and they I'm like damn they in Thailand and yeah. they in, but either they are living at home uh -huh. or they have roommates yeah now listen yeah. hey get it how you live for sure get your and, traveling and you being good. you being well traveled will change your perspective on your entitlement and ego and all of that so by sure. all means but at the end of the day, when you listen, when you're looking at people that's taking care of business every single day and it's like, man, what the hell is going on? Like, you you know, because because that's the thing that I see with the dating concept, right? The dating shows. I need somebody that's going to travel, somebody that's well traveled and travel. And I'm like, when you look at our parents, they was like, they need to have a job. We, I'm trying to get this house. But the priorities are different. And your priorities are different because you're allowed to have different priorities. When you don't have access to be able to change your priorities whenever you want, it's gonna your priorities are groceries, taking care of the bills, 
paying rent or mortgage. I got to go to work. I can't not. Nah, I can't. I can't take that day off. I got to save my vacation time because the family reunion coming. Up. But but when you don't have all of those things because you have a buffer there, you have three roommates splitting the the rent, or you live down the hall from your parents and they only want six hundred from you every month. Oh, it it could be this too, and it not could be this. It's part of this. I tend to forget. I am uh, an anomaly sometimes because I have two kids. I share um, one with my, my with the one mother as far as like how often uh-huh. they're there. But I be like, oh yeah, I'm full time. Yeah, for eight, twenty five, eight, twenty five, eight, and. These vacations I see y'all on sometimes the kids ain't there, so you got somebody who they might be over there at this mm-hmm. time, time at the weekend, whatever, mm-hmm. wh- whoever they're with. But I just don't feel like I can take vacations and be like, my kids ain't there. Like my yeah, thought about yeah, expenses yeah, yeah. when it comes to vacations, like okay, I could take a vacation go yeah. here, but when I think about the causes, like it's not just gonna be me. So yeah. I think it, there's different aspects that go into that, but it's like. It's very it's it's been interesting. I've had to like make myself feel like, oh yeah, man, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, for sure. Because yeah. when you spin it the other way around, like you have a home to go to and you you have a little you have you have a daily escape. Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like some people that, you know, are taking these trips but they don't have the things that we have, it's it's a it's an escape for them from reality, whatever stuff they got to deal with whatever work and stuff like that but True. but what I what I like that you brought up when you said um you know a lot of y'all taking trips the stats ain't matching what's on social media on social media everybody's taking trips everybody's in the gym 24/7 all of that stuff but the stats are saying that man you know you know, I still need my parents and I'm going to be honest shout out to y'all that y'all even have parents to depend on mm-hmm. because mm-hmm baby boomers a lot of them didn't have parents to depend on Mm -hmm. gen x didn't have a lot they couldn't depend on a lot of their parents because a lot of them had children young when their parents were still working Mm -hmm. and weren't retired and then here we come siblings of gen x where it's like you know they kind of close to retirement but hey man harold you got to get out there and you got to you got to get it how you live darian you got to get out there and get it how you live you know what i'm saying and shout out to the people who don't who may have parents or don't have parents and are able and have the ability and know that they don't have nobody to fall on and rely on. Yeah. Like some of us who do have parents, and I can say I know a lot of my uh, experience has been like, you. there's a shame that comes with having to get um, assistance, but sometimes you kind of just fall into a point of like, oh, well, I know somebody's going to help me. And you kind of like forget like, oh, no, I, you know, I got to eat what I kill. And uh-huh. you, the, the shame sometimes comes with like an expectation. Um, sometimes there's a shame, there's an expectation. Yeah. So shout out to the people who don't have parents or do have parents, they're just not financially um, getting support from them. Because those of us who do have parents, sometimes we forget that, um, or we we lose sight of taking care of these things ourselves and things become a norm yeah so for that sure was kind of like my experience a little bit where it's like it was a norm but it is not it was some. it was a shame involved in that because yeah. our parents may not also understand because some of our parents are homeowners yeah and they don't necessarily understand the field that's out here right now oh no they locked into their mortgage right and they don't understand what's going on out here right now. They don't have a full scope. It's harder. Okay, so we've been in our house. We've been in our house going on seven years. Mm. We literally got our house before we made a year being married, right? It is not harder, but probably five times harder to buy a house now. Than seven years ago. Even I remember the thing was, yeah, I mean, you get your first house, that's your, you know, that's your little throwaway, whatever. And then, you know, you build up your equity. Now, it ain't this way across the board, but income is that way across the board. But in California, you can have a nice amount of equity in your home 
to where when you sell it, you got a nice little profit and it might scratch the surface for a down payment for the house that you feel you deserve or think that you should be raising a family out of. Now, the thing is that a lot of people don't understand is like, well, what's the point of buying a house? Well, how is it worth it? Because equity will continue to go up. The value is called appreciation. Mm -hmm. The appreciation. I appreciate it. it. It'll, It'll continue to go up in value as you pay it off. So at some point, when you pay your home off, you'll just be paying the taxes and the value will still be going up and up and up and up and up because you got to think houses that were built in, let's say, 1940s, 1950, which are still obviously up and renovated. Those homes probably went for like maybe ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. What are they going for now? 300, 400, 500,000. So what were those houses going to be in the next five years? Pretty much on a million. You see what I'm saying? So, Getting in something and then building equity and things that's important, but just being able to get into it is so much of a challenge now because jobs ain't paying what people need. You know what I'm saying? Bills, everything is expensive. So right now is not the time to be pointing at who's broke, because to my knowledge, unless you are a millionaire, you are feeling some broke moments. Even if you got a lot of money in the bank, you are being conscious about what you all of a sudden you don't want to buy that many stakes. Oh, all yeah, of a sudden, man. you know what? I, you know, I can we, make this at home. Yeah, you know, I could do this. Yeah, we don't have to go out to eat. Mm-hmm. Bad boy is getting ready to stream, ain't it? Yeah, I'll just wait for it to come out on the stream thing. So I ain't got to pay for tick like bruh. Yep. yep. You ain't spending nothing less than $50 going to the movies. Yep. For your tickets, your popcorn, and dude. So nobody should be really clowning anybody on a financial level. But seeing that number where it said 46% of Gen Z got to depend on, fan, or on, on, on parents, that's not because they failed. No. Some parents probably didn't teach their kids financial literacy or responsibility. But this is about the economy. The state of where we are. The state of where we are at, the sign of these times. Mm-hmm. So that uh, hopefully that marinates on people. Hopefully people go do the research on that and try to make adjustments because bro, it's hard for everyone, mm-hmm. young and old. It is difficult. So that's why I was, the name apartment po is <laughs> still we we wait. It's it's gonna happen. I I'm going to have to downgrade because um, I'm renting and mm-hmm. my rent is. They're trying to get wild on you. I mean, each year it goes up. You know, like rent goes up each year, but my rent is a here's, lot. Here's a, here's a good point. The fact that California had to visit the conversation of rent control. Yeah. And I don't think California is the only place that has had to visit this conversation, but that should let you know within itself how hard it is for people because now they got to go back and say, all right, hold on. Y'all doing way too much on the rent thing man well now I know you know the law passed to where they the the deposit for uh, rent in a, like renting a home or an apartment cannot be more than what the actual first month or one month of rent would be it shouldn't be yeah it should well you know been. sometimes it could be double that you know why I think they do that it used to be like it could be the first and last month's rent combined as the deposit you know why I think I mean that was it, some people were taking advantage of that mm-hmm. but I'm gonna tell you why I think they did that and why that could be controversial later on because what would happen is renters would do so much damage to the home so if they already got that deposit that's probably going to go towards the repairs if they yeah, didn't spend yeah, it yeah for sure but for the people that hey listen man my credit report has been great my rental history has been amazing there should have been because that that should have only really applied for people that you're taking a gamble on but for people that have at least a okay or better rental history credit history why are you slamming them with two three months of rent where it's like, come on, man. Yeah, they they just trying to they just trying to find a way. You know what I'm saying? But there has been some because I I know one or two people with some horror stories behind renting. Where it's like, yeah, man, I rented out and I you know I fell back because of their story and they did me like this and it's gonna cost me 10, 15 bands to repair. So I'm gonna just sell the property because that's gonna be money I lost. But I remember how we got in how me and my wife got into scenarios like, man, forget it, we just gonna buy a house is because of all of the hoops you had to jump through to rent. 
Because we were trying to get out of the apartment in at least like a condo situation or something. And they got you jumping through hoops. I mean, it's even a um, it's kind of a scam when they when they have the little open houses and they make you pay for the thirty dollar application fee. Well, shit, if you get 20 people to pay thirty dollars for an application fee and you don't even run all of their credit, you got their thirty dollars and you only going to run credit to the person you really want to rent to. And so you just collect the money just off of some somebody wanting to rent and never run their credit. Because legally, when somebody run your credit, they're supposed to give you a copy of it. Yep. So why my credit ain't ran? And now you got my money. I mean, it's, right it's, now, it's, little, bro, it's little funky games like that. So I get why they got to create laws. Right now, your, your rent for an apartment for three bedrooms is a mortgage. Or higher, same cost, or rent. higher. I know people it's that pay. Than a, a, I know people apartment. that pay more for rent than we pay for mortgage, bro. And it's I'm insane. Saying like an apartment rent for three bedroom and a house renting for three bedrooms are the same price. Same price. That's crazy. And you one, might have to include another extra one fifty, two hundred, maybe for like water, sewage. Yeah, like utilities and things of that nature. Yeah, but it's the same. Insane. It's the same. Insane dog So that's where we at man Yeah man The way of the world Is crazy And um We want to get out of here You know what I'm saying Cause we gonna run out of tape Even yeah, though we ain't yeah, got no yeah, tape yeah, It's digital Yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yo Let us know what you guys think Man we gonna go ahead And we gonna slide out Let us know what you think We said a lot We covered a lot Yeah so you know what I'm saying You know where to find us We welcome all the conversation TikTok, Instagram, YouTube You know where to find us So just let us know what you think Let us know what you want to hear You know what I'm saying And y'all stay safe out there Because they wild at these rallies yeah, And everywhere else crazy, You know what I'm saying Anyways You've been tuning into the Notion Podcast This is your boy Dizzy D Spill With my host as always Paul And you were supposed to say the nah, new name I, man You were supposed trying to, to say establishes from Farmer Poe and then <laughs> they, that's what they're used to. <laughs> Anyways, until next time, peace.